Hey guys, welcome back to another video and I'm finally able to get out on the boat and do some fishing. I got my ultralight setups with me today. So for those that have been around the channel, you know I'm gonna be going for some brim. river is moving way more than what it was last time. It is much higher after a couple of rainfalls. So I'm looking for areas off the main river, uh, mainly jetties, I guess the best way to describe it, or small creeks with less current but still in the banks because that's where I think I'm going to find these brim. Only one way to find out though, so I'm going to get the gear ready and get a line wet. I focused on two primary areas. From the launch, I went north and the river was very, very high here, which is something I kind of expected, but didn't know what it would look like. Sure enough, where I'd fished previously in the last week, all of it was completely blown out. Small creeks were now flooded, and there was really nothing within the banks. So I decided to go farther south, where the river got a little bit wider, and you had a few more creeks running into it, in the hopes that the water level may be lower. And sure enough, that did the trick. When I came into this area, I simply went into tributaries and found anywhere where water was in the bank, and I tried my best to fish those areas, and as you'll see, I was somewhat successful doing so. I think I might finally have a fish. I do. <laughs> and a pretty good one at that. I don't think that's a... Yeah, that cannot be a bluegill. It's a bass. <laughs> That's my first bass I've actually ever caught on a cricket. How about that? My goodness. Hey, buddy. <laughs> well, there we have it. Not a bad catch whatsoever. I'm going for a bluegill, obviously, but I will take a bass. Certainly put up a good fight. Felt very weird. I think this is my 10th bass I've ever caught myself, but very, very dark colors just to match these waters back here, but probably half a pound or so. We'll go ahead and release them, get another cricket on, see if we can find something else. And he's off. <laughs> Terrific. Let's see if we can find some more. There we go. There's another fish on. And this one might actually be a brim. I'm sure I'm gonna be blown out in this picture. <laughs> it certainly is. Here, let me get the boat around so light's not shining y'all in the face as bad. That's a lot better. <laughs> All right. Well, here is the first brim of the day. Beautiful, very dark in color. I don't know the exact subspecies of this particular one, but it's got a pretty wide mouth. Um, I don't think it's pumpkin seed or anything like that. There we go. Very beautiful fish. Gonna go ahead and release them. Well, that's two from this spot. Let's see if we can get number three, four, and five. I think there's already another one on. Yep. <laughs> I think I found a couple back here. Not extremely big, but as always, very fun to catch. Another small one, this is actually a female. And one thing to notice, it just again, how dark these colors are. I'm used to fishing a little bit lighter water instead of these, well really, I'm in a salt marsh today, so it's a bit unique for my experience. Yeah. One thing to notice is, especially when you catch fish in different water types, the darker the water, the darker the fish, and the lighter the water, the lighter the fish color. But another small one, release him. And there's another fish on. Another good little fighter. <laughs> and a bluegill. Wow. I'm literally casting like six feet in front of the boat, in case you couldn't tell. 
it is tight back here. This is a 1548 tracker and um, I'm squeezing through just about all of this and it's only about two feet deep. So nice thing about having a low draft, relatively small boat, you can get to places like this and when you can't find fish anywhere else, well, sometimes they're just back here in the hard to reach places. Let's go ahead and get this guy back in. <laughs> Oh, I got a fish, but it's hung up on something. There we go. Oh, come on, buddy. Fight. Let's get through that brush. Let's get you to the... Oh, wow. This is what I've been wanting. <laughs> this is finally a nice bluegill. Let me get them calmed down a little bit. Perfect. Super, super dark color for just a regular bluegill, but beautiful fish about hand size maybe a little bit smaller Let's see if i can get a better look at them here for y'all take a look at that beauty i knew there was some back here the water is really cold let me put them back real quick it's april right now we got a big rainstorm two days ago so the water went from being relatively warm to pretty cold again and last weekend when i came down here just to try it out the bite was quick easy fast bobber go down you know they were hooked today on the other hand with this cold water it's gone back to being a really really soft bite so you gotta let them take it if you don't chances are you probably won't catch them so that's why i'm being really gentle and just waiting as long as possible for the bobber to go down or to, i know that the line's moving in the water that's really helping today Water temp changes immensely in just a couple of days with all the rain we get in this watershed, so something to keep in mind. But let's see if we can get one a little bit bigger than him. <laughs> There's another one. Nice size once again. Probably came off that same bed. Just got to fight him through all this brush. Wow, there's some really big ones back there. <laughs> That's my new PB for this watershed for sure. Nice, good size one. I might have to start keeping some of these back here. Calm down, little guy. I know, I know, you don't like it. There we go. Let's get that circle hook out. A lot of people may make fun of me for using circle hooks, but I promise you, they really work. Another beautiful bluegill. Probably a little bit difficult to see this out here. Let me turn it around for you. That's better. Wonderful fish. He's going in the cooler. For my setup today, I have a Bass Pro Shop Micro Plus a rod and reel combo. I got this thing for like 20 something bucks. Granted, that was 10 years ago. On that, I have two pound test line between two and four. It really does make a difference. And then I use a little bit of a unique setup. This is a bobber stop set, uh, setup, but it's got a teal bobber. And you can see it goes up to this yellow line right here and allows it to stop. That way all I have to do is move this up and down, get changes on the fly, two very small pieces of lead shot, and then a size one or two circle hook. These things are tiny. Flea Fly makes them and Gamagatsu makes them. If you're interested in any of this equipment I am using today, I have my Amazon store link below where you can find any of these items for your next adventure. After four hours, finally caught a couple of fish, including a bass. Probably my first one in two or three years. But that upper area, there's just not a whole lot of sloughs off it, not a massive amount of marshland. So you have a narrow river, which is gonna have current ripping through. And when it does flood, it's going everywhere. The fish are gonna follow the water up. So I decided to hit the south area, somewhere I've never fished before, in a very unique setting. It's rare that I deal with, you know, seagrass and basically that's it and a few trees here and there. Most of the time I'm dealing with hardwood cypress and basically swamp woods. So I really enjoyed fishing this unique setting. But all I did was find creeks that were still within their levee or within their banks is the best way to describe it, that were relatively shallow. And sure enough, that did the trick. Now, with all those, these yellow flies eating me up and it getting close to dark, I want to go ahead, get everything packed up, and start heading towards the ramp. we 
where the boat's at now was completely dry earlier. Just about to that tree is where the water started and coming out all the way to here. The boat ramp should be somewhere in this area. But this water's come up at least 120 feet or so into the parking lot. It's a good thing I got back when I did because it's all the way up to the truck. But hey, that's one of the things about learning these new areas, fishing them, high water, things of that nature. You just got to learn. I want to see if I can find this boat ramp, hopefully not get the trailer off of it and end up messing up the axle and finally start calling it a day. Hmm. That could have been better. Well, this is hopefully the first of many bluegill trips to come this year. But guys, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to share, like, and subscribe for more. And as always, thanks for watching.